I, I don't know about telling people that I have four cats at home, but I will, I will confess that I'm, two very elderly cats have passed away, so I'm down from six cats, which is about four too many. Uh, but I'm very familiar with Bark. I uh, got to know Bark long before I came into public office. Bark was a focus of mine as a council member. I did a little, uh, it was a focus of mine as uh, the city controller and has remained a priority as mayor. Uh, as a council member, I pushed through a national evaluation of what was truly a horrific facility and uh, began to move changes forward. Uh, as controller, we did an audit of the operations out here and made more incremental change. Uh, the, the beauty of being mayor is that I have been able to make more aggressive changes out here and through Alfred Moran, put a team in place to really um, not just make change but institutionalize change. The piece that's been missing at BARC and over the last couple of years has really stepped forward is the public. This is not a facility that we want to hide, but it's not yet a facility that we want to show off. And that is our goal. I'm uh, glad that Councilmember Gonzalez and, and Councilmember Sullivan are here with me today. I know uh, Certainly, Councilmember Gonzalez has been talking to me uh, for a very long time about the needs of uh, bark and the animals in our city, and um, we are happy to be here today to celebrate progress, but we're just, I'll keep repeating this, we're not done yet. Uh, improving the quality of life of the city of Houston includes making sure that we have appropriate provision for homeless animals uh, across our city. What we're going to be doing is designing a new adoption center. This is an interesting and unusual building. That's the nicest way I can describe it. It's been problematic since it was built, uh, but the rest of this facility has been patched together. And uh, a little bit here, a little bit there, and it was designed to take animals off the street and hold them until they could be euthanized. It was never really designed as a place for people to adopt animals, for a, a place for the public to come and be comfortable. The new adoption center uh, is designed to be exactly that, a welcoming place for people who want a permanent companion adopted through BARC. Uh, the new adoption center will include enclosures and uh, lighting designs for more space, more natural light, access to a large get acquainted courtyard. It will meet guidelines published by the American Kennel Club for enclosure size and design and air movement. Uh, it will include a separate nursery for puppies and mothers rather than what we have today and I just went out and visited, uh, which is a uh, the original sally port that's been closed in and we pump temporary air, condition, air conditioning into it. Uh, over the last few years, the, we have changed the staff here. We have instituted new volunteer programs. Uh, we have instituted new foster and adoption programs. We have aggressively increased uh, spay and spaying and neutering uh, and offers to potential owners uh, and the owner counseling that we do. Uh, we are doing more and more animal educational programs to school children. And uh, we believe that our commitment to the Asilomar Accords and our public operating of this facility, uh, which reflects in the uh, reports on the BARC website, will link us to the national movement to make shelters more humane and more appropriate for the animals that are housed. Now we're going to continue to have challenges. Houston is more than 600 square miles. We have a culture that as hard as we try apparently does not believe that spaying and neutering pets is a priority. The reason that we have the challenges that we do in this facility 
is irresponsible pet owners. End of sentence. Unless you are a breeder with the appropriate kennel facilities and a track record, there is no reason for you to have a fertile pet. Period. End of sentence. Uh, we have more than 300,000 stray or abandoned animals across the city of Houston. And it's the taxpayers of Houston who have to pick up the burden. And then ultimately, innocent animals that have to pay the price of that. Bark is required by law to accept every animal picked up off the streets or surrendered to this facility. We don't have the choice to say, no, we're not going to do it. Uh, the cost of providing basic shelter and veterinary care to a dog or cat at Bark averages $500 for a 24-day stay. Uh, our average intake of dogs and cats is nearly 100 per day, uh, and Bark expects more than 2,000 animals per month will be processed and cared for over the coming months. And we're in the, the spring breeding season, so we're about to have a spike in that. Just because the problems are large and that they have been, we've been addressing them for a long time and we're frustrated doesn't mean we can stop and doesn't mean that we've given up. We think our new adoption facility will significantly increase our ability to connect our citizens with the appropriate pet and the new space will free up this facility for the appropriate changes as well. Now, I mentioned at the beginning that the city had been doing a lot of things, but what we really needed was the public. BARC has a dedicated volunteer cadre who come out here and supplement the staff, uh, giving attention particularly to the dogs, walking them, playing with them, helping keep them socialized. But we also have created the Bark Foundation. And the Bark Foundation has been stepping up to help in the fundraising for this new era for Bark. We have money set aside from a previous bond issue to do the initial funding for the new adoption center. But the Bark Foundation will be our partner moving forward in the, the next phases because we are going to phase in this new facility. And I challenge anybody to come out today and say that we don't provide appropriate and humane care. But I encourage everyone to come back when we finish this facility and see that we have exponentially improved what we do here and the kind of facility that we can be proud of.